these up nerds. How are you guys doing today? Barry in the house just dropping by. Hope you are well too. Thank you for that. Got some thumbs up going on. Loving it. Let me just make sure, of course. Getting you there. Going the right direction. I hope that you guys are all having a good Thursday. You're almost at Friday. Those of you not in retail, that usually means something. But for those of you fellow retail heads, one, I hope you're still gainfully employed. But also, you know that the weekends are your weekdays. Maybe you are starting out your, your week now. Traveled tourist in the house. But you're working. I love that. Thanks for the support. Good to see you. Thanks for the thumbs up as well. It is a pleasure. It is an honor to be here with all of you today. Uh, and as always with my normal intro, what is up, nerds? It's me, your buddy, your pal, Hey Archer. Welcome back to my channel. This is Hey Archer Live. Every Thursday, well, with the quarantine on Thursdays, we do a live episode uh, at 3.30 Eastern. So if you're watching this, re-recorded, stu- stay tuned for next Thursday's episode. Uh, maybe you could join the chat and talk with everybody. I like talking everything nerdy from comic books to movies, uh, TV shows, UFC, whatever you like, whatever is in your nerd space. Um, but today um, is an interesting one because I was watching This Is Only a Test, which is the podcast of Tested.com. For those of you who may not know what that is, it's actually Adam Savage, who was the host of Mythbusters. He started his own YouTube channel, and on there they have a number of different podcasts. But on this one, it doesn't involve Adam. It's actually a couple other people. Norman Chan is usually the host. And they reminded me of a great legend that is about to do some legendary things. What is up? How you doing? Good to see you. A lot of you from the income stream. So uh, thanks for the support, of course. Um, So I will give the shout out to a true legend in this world. Uh, We'll give the round of applause, of course, to the one, the only, future, future astronaut. About to be the greatest astronaut of our time, Tom Cruise, ladies and gentlemen. Tom Cruise is about to transcend what any any normal person can do and wants to actually make a movie in space filmed with him in space. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, definitely worth noting. Aaron in the house. Good to see you as well. Um, Again, it's nice to see a lot of you from the income stream all coming in and supporting each other. It's great. Um, but we have to support Tom Cruise as well. Uh, no, but se- like seriously, I think that's the coolest thing ever that, I, that I've ever seen. And what I love about it is people in like the science community are kind of upset, it seems like, at Tom Cruise because he's just buying his way into space. But I feel like that's just, that's just life in general now, right? You can just learn enough money, you can buy yourself into anything. Uh, you could buy yourself in the presidency for all you know. But it's just crazy to think that, like, Tom Cruise is just sitting there, somebody who already does his own stunts, and is just like, you know what? Next movie, we're going to push the limits. We're going above, and all this Earth stuff, that's, that's last decade. Space is where it's at. And I hope, I hope that he's actually doing this with Elon Musk, because, again, that would be, like, that... That whole concept, just the whole concept of like Scientology and <laughs> SpaceX coming together to go to space is like something out of a sci-fi movie that this is like the intro to how the world got destroyed. <laughs> it was Scientology and Elon Musk coming together to, to send Tom Cruise into space to film a movie. Just absolutely, absolutely blows my mind. Um, he needs to go bigger and better every time. Here's the other crazy thing about, and I just love how I spent so much time talking about Tom Cruise and we just started the show. Um, So Tom Cruise has been doing his own stunts for quite a while. 
and he's approaching that um, that like Jackie Chan level where for years Jackie Chan couldn't do movies in the states because nobody would no insurance company would cover him and Tom Cruise is getting to that point where he's getting crazier and crazier and you know he's got to find ways around around that he refuses to use uh, a stuntman but I'm assuming it's one of those where I'm assuming that there is a stunt person involved at least once in a movie for as a stand-in. But I mean, the last Mission Impossible movie was put on halt because when he did the building jump, when he hit the the wall on the other side, he like broke both his legs, which was insane. But the, um, the fact that was brought up in the episode, which is kind of mind blogging, boggling Tom Cruise at this moment, is older than Tommy Lee Jones was when Tommy Lee Jones did Space Cowboys, which is just like crazy to think. It's almost like that, um, there's that meme of Aunt May where it's like Aunt May as a kid and it's, you know, old lady Aunt May and it's like Aunt May now and it's, um, uh, was it Tessa? Not Tessa, uh, oh, right in the comments what her name is. I always forget. But, um, it's like just that difference of like what an old person was when you were a kid versus now. And like Tom Cruise now is an old person in theory. I mean, he's pushing 60, but yet at the same time looks nothing like Tommy Lee Jones when he was pushing 60, when he did um, space Cowboys, which is also a very underrated movie, by the way. I don't know if you guys have seen space Cowboys, but it's definitely worth a watch. Another thing that was worth a watch this week, uh, and if you have not watched it yet, you'll have two options for reviews. So this week, um, we had the release of Justice League Dark Apocalypse War, which was the, or is the last movie in the current DC animated universe. So if you want the spoiler-free version of a review, Aaron in the comments, of course, I'll put this up until I read the next comment. Aaron has done a, there you go. He has done a uh, spoiler-free review on his channel, so you can check that out. But if you want the spoiler review, you can head to my playlist after you hit like and subscribe to the channel and check out my review of Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. But I will say that for an animated movie, it was quite nice to see a cartoon with, like MA level violence. They, they, they leaned full in in this movie on, we know, all right, we get it. Kids aren't watching this. It's dudes 25 to 45 watching this movie. Let's just make this for them. It's a cartoon so we can push the, the limits. And pretty dope movie, I must say. Pretty, pretty dope movie. And then we had Aaron say, how will we get the arm pump running in space, artificial gravity? How will we get the arm pump running in space? Like uh, for blood, do you mean? I'll have to do... Oh, you mean like a workout, like lifting weights? Is that what you mean? All right, let me know, let me know uh, in the next comments. Tom Lee Jones was born old. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Lee Jones, um, Morgan Freeman, Patrick Stewart all did not exist prior to the age of 55. What is up in the house? Kadir, good to see you. It's funny, somebody, I don't remember, was it? It might have been the episode I just recorded with Lenny where uh, he's like, is it Hey, Hey Archer or Hey Archer? So really, it's a play on words up to you. I'm copying sort of the, um, what do you call it? the Hey Arnold kind of format there. All right, let's see what you got. Tom Cruise running with his arm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Him, you know, you know what I would love to see? You know, instead of, you know, everybody's talking about, I don't, well, I, I don't know if you've seen this, uh, those of you who are not in the mixed martial arts, combat sports world. Um, Evander Holyfield said he's down to do an exhibition fight. And on the flip side of that, Mike Tyson the other day posted a video hitting mitts and you know, it's like a four punch combo or whatever. 
Well, sorry. And now everybody's like, oh, Mike Tyson should fight Holyfield. For, even if it's an exhibition, they should just fight. And to me, I rath- I'd much rather have um, Tom Cruise and Sylvester Stallone have a foot race than watch Holyfield and Mike Tyson fight. Because I think they're both the funniest runners in the game at the moment. So definitely got to check that out. What do we got? Watch any video of Tom Cruise? Yeah. But I'm telling you, Sylvester Stallone, I'm sorry, I think he takes the cake on the best running game in movies at this moment. Um, I'm curious. You know what? Let me see. If I can pull this up. And I'm going to mute it. Uh, was it Expendables 1? No, there's the, there's the scene in Expendables where... He's running, like, in the warehouse. I'm going to mute it. This is on YouTube, so hopefully we don't get a uh, some sort of copyright strike on it. Let's see if we can get there. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you like you're telling me that you would not pay and it's the same stunt as Tom Cruise the the plane thing in uh Mission Impossible I'm saying relay race of some sort with Tom Cruise racing against maybe it's a you know what for the, for the sake of entertainment it's a 400 so they got to do one lap on the track Tom Cruise versus Sylvester Stallone, who has the nerve, by the way, to be releasing um, or wants to release another Demolition Man. So we can talk about that in a second. Thank you for the sub. Appreciate that. Welcome to the channel. What else do we have here? 941 there. Where are you that it's 941? Guessing you're in England? What are we? Plus five there? So you're probably on the other side. Oh, what country are you uh, watching from? Let me know. We have Aaron. Sloan does a weird body flail when he's running, like pushing his torso forward. And I th- <laughs> So essentially, Aaron, you're saying that Sly is doing a demolition man run is what you're, uh, you're leaning towards. Salone's so old, he's running like Groot. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But you're right. So let me see if I can find uh, a video of Tom Cruise running in the UK. All right, cool. Um, That we can show. And again, hopefully. Oh, but that's right. There actually is a video on this. I'm going to put it in the comment section. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it. Uh, you could definitely watch it after this video, I'd suggest. But there's a video called The Evolution of Tom, or the Tom Cruise. I can't even see because my overlays are in the way. Yeah, The Evolution of the Tom Cruise Run. So let me see if I can get to old Tom Cruise running. Here we go. Yeah, so he's still, he's still, <laughs> he's still a better runner than Sylvester Stallone, but I'm just saying I want to see this relay race because <laughs> it'd be great. I mean, come on, come on. That's gonna, be, I mean, it's gonna be awesome to see that. Let me exit out of this. Uh, in the comments, let me know who are the who are the great runners of our time that should be in this race. If we had to do. Yeah, if we had to do a, uh, what is that? It's been a while. I mean, that's high school there. What was it, a four by two? It's a 400, um, 400 yard race, but then you have two people doing it. So one lap around the track, relay to the next person that along goes around the track. Is that correct? I can't remember. It's been a while. But who would you put in that race 
of the old man action star. And of course, leave a comment and a like on the video. Andrew in the house saying, seriously, didn't actually perform that stunt. Oh, Sly didn't actually. Yeah, I know. What a fake. What a fake. Tom Cruise, right? And that's why Tom Cruise is so amazing. Tom Cruise has all the cool stunts happen, and he, but he's doing the entire thing. Stallone's getting all jacked, pretending like he's doing stuff. No, it's just all CGI effects. The other one, actually, that is much of a surprise to me. Uh, and for those of you who are new watching, we've got some uh, new viewers in here. Again, welcome to the show. Leave a thumbs up if you're enjoying it. Um, this is kind of like the comment section Q&A type show where you bring up topics, we talk about it. And right now we're talking about the race between Sly and Tom Cruise. Not a presidential race, an actual foot race. Very important topics here. The, the one that I just learned last year, I think, is in Revenge of the Sith when Mace Windu is fighting Sidious. It is not Sam, um, Samuel Jackson and whoever, uh, is that Ian... Ian, uh, not Ian McDermott. Is that it? Ian McDermott? No. You guys can tell me who it is. Ian, whatever, that he's fighting as Sidious is not actually them fighting. They had two stunt people do that fight and then CGI superimposed their faces on both characters. It completely, um, it completely ruined that movie for me. But I mean, it redeemed itself, but still. I was very pissed off when I found out Samuel Jackson was not actually fighting in that scene. Aaron's got, I don't think this was, I don't think this is what you intended for today's live. My bad. No, that's exactly what I want this live show to be. So, um, this show, the Hey Archer live show, it started off as, for those of you who are new, and shout out to Aaron Waller. He's been here from the beginning, from the jump, and go like and subscribe on his channel, of course. So, Hey Archer live started like, I believe most live shows did in the quarantine as a means to communicate, well, I'll say on YouTube, because it's different for Instagram and all of those, but in the YouTube space, the live shows started out, I think, as a means to help other people, well, sorry, get their channels going, get their streaming going, that kind of thing, and posed as a live Q&A. So that's how this show started. You know, I'm nine episodes in on this, which I didn't realize till today. But the live show, I was like, all right, this is going to be a live YouTube one-on-one thing where you put in questions about content creation, and then I answer them. So you can still do that here, but I don't want that to be the basis of this live show because this channel primarily is not about that. I've been making a lot of content about how to create content, but that's because I want all of you to make your own content just like this. And that way you can express yourselves and if it's talking about whatever you want to, it doesn't have to be nerd-based, but I want you to, to have your voice. And for a lot of people, when it comes to content creation and YouTube, they just don't know how to do it, or it seems like a, such a far-fetched kind of idea. So, you know, the live show started out as let's help you start making your content, but I don't want that to be the only basis of the show. I want to talk about the, re, the foot race between Sylvester Stallone and Tom Cruise. I feel like it's a very, very important question. So then we got, don't click the link. It opens the same window, essentially leaving this live feed. Ooh, that's a good point. I did not know that, that it would do that. So, all right, you know what I'll do? I'll, if I remember, I'll put the evolution of Tom Cruise running in the description when this is done. And I think that will be a great thing for somebody to just randomly walk into the stream and hear that sentence. Whoa. We got bruh. In the house, just Samson. Good to see you. I need I need a bro button. I don't want to I don't want to rip off Pat Flynn because I feel like that is his thing. But I feel like as members of the income stream, which is the uh, live show that this guy Pat Flynn does, we, like bro has turned into like a thing. And I feel like amongst us members, like we all need like some sort of bro button. The only button I have here, which I still have to figure out a good way to use it and I have to correct the the intro and exit of it this is my Thundercats ho I need it to be like the it's gotta have some sort of animation to it I think so 
that is my rant on bro. Of movie runners, Tom has it. Tom has all his shots with minimal cutting because he does his own stunts. Yeah. I mean, that is true. I mean, it's one of those where I think it also brings a level of realism that other movies can't do. And it also kind of helps keep his movies in its own crazy way grounded. So, you know, where Vin Diesel is doing, you know, oh no, Letty's flying through the air. I'm going to drive my car into a wall, but I'm going to get out of the car while it's going, stand on the hood, crash the car, fly in the air, catch Letty, land on another car. It, 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 that's so far-fetched because you're like, all right, that's, that's all CG. I can visibly see it's all CG. Versus Tom Cruise is racing up a mountain on a motorcycle with no helmet on, swerving through cars, but because he's actually doing it, it brings that whole another level of realism that you feel the suspense of the action scene. Whereas with Vin Diesel, they're doing all sorts. I mean, he's, they're, they're pulling helicopters out of the sky with their hands. Like, you don't, you, the Fast and Furious type movie has lost its sense of, um, not even mystique, a sense of immersion. Like, you're, you're watching it, but it's a video game. You don't feel like on the edge of your seat, like, oh, man, like, how are they going to get through this? What's going to happen? Whereas with Mission Impossible, yeah, you're, you're there. And yeah, as he's holding on to the side of the plane, yeah, he's buckled in. But at the same time, he's actually hanging out the side of the plane. So I didn't even realize that Sly did the same stunt, which is crazy. But Sly, I think, did it first. Tom's shorter and leaner. All that muscle on Stallone makes him rigid. I think the, on top of that, the back surgery and also, and also like, then he, what movie was that? He broke his, oh, Expendables. He broke his neck in Expendables. So Sly's back and neck are all jacked up. So it's, uh, that definitely contributes. Do you have a mouse with no clicky click sound or is that an Apple thing? No, I definitely, I guess I could use my touchpad, but it's just easier for me to use the clicking mouse. I didn't realize you guys could hear that on this because this direct mic usually doesn't uh, pick up sounds like that, but I will look into getting a quieter mouse. So I apologize for that. That segue though, smooth. <laughs> we got just Samson with Tom would smoke him, not even close. True. You would think so. But, I mean, the thing is, with Tom Cruise being shorter, right, Sylvester Stallone has the longer le leg stride. So, on the, on, the, on the 400, yeah, I think you're right. I think in a 400-meter race, um, I said yards before, in a 400-meter race, I think Tom Cruise wins it easily. 100-meter dash, though, just off the jump, I think Sly might, I think Sly could do it. And if for nothing else, his arm flailing, flailing would probably just knock Tom Cruise out. Um, but that's also assuming, <laughs> I, think, I think it would be a spectacle in itself to just see them line up at the line and have to put their hands down and bend down in that position to like race off. Because I don't think Sly can bend down that much. Um, I don't think he could bend at all. I think Sylvester Stallone is actually, um, he's the, the pirate guy from Family Guy. Like there's no bending of the arms anymore. There's no bending of the knees anymore. I'm moving my legs, and you guys can't see it. I just realized, but I'm moving my legs right now. Uh, it's just straight. You know that that's Tom, uh, especially Stallone at this point. So, um, yeah. Let's see. You need a dude button <laughs> income stream for the win. Yeah, I need. Is that what it should be, dude? Instead of bruh. Oh, like dude, where's my car? I could, yeah, I could. I could probably. Try to do something like that. Of course, hashtag bro nation for the win. Um, by the way, if you are new in the, in the stream and you're uh, enjoying this Tom Cruise versus Sylvester Stallone relay race conversation, um, definitely leave a like because we're about to pass, I think, my record for likes in a live view, which is eight. We're at seven. So if you had not hit the thumbs up yet, do so, please. I'd appreciate it. Love you long time. This is, uh, this is fun. And you know what's, what's great about being a small YouTuber, for those of you who are also aspiring YouTubers or whatever it may be, is you have to not only enjoy the process, which sounds cliche, but you also have to enjoy like the small wins. Like 
having, you know, right now we're at six of you who are watching. We've had total about, I think, 12, like kind of jumping in and out. Uh, we did. Oh, we had the thumbs up. Awesome. Thank you, whoever that was. Um, it's one of those where the you have to appreciate the small wins. And when you have a channel and you get nine thumbs up, thank you so much, um, you guys. I just blew your ear out with the Thundercats toe. But, <laughs> but um, you know, when you get something like that that you have not had prior, you have to enjoy it and be happy it's happening. And most importantly, I'm just happy that this Hey Archer community is growing because the one thing I used to have on my Twitter, I don't know if it's still there, is um, that Hey Archer is not my channel, it's your channel. So that also contributes to the content I make. It's all nerd-based, but it doesn't have to be a certain nerd topic specific thing. I want Hey Archer to be, if you guys want to talk about Star Wars, we're talking Star Wars. You want to talk about the best soundboard for making your own Star Trek podcast, we'll talk about the best soundboard. Like, I want it to be kind of like all-encompassing. Um, so all of you make this a great show. I'll just flash my logo there. That'll be my uh, happy, <laughs> my happy sign until I come up with something else. Uh, yeah, so bra nation. And yeah, definitely check out the income stream from Pat Flynn every morning at 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, Pat Flynn teaches you how to develop a YouTube channel, but also just uh, how to create and earn passive income while you're working digitally. So uh, if you want to be somebody who's like, you know, you write eBooks and you teach people how to do stuff, he shows you how to do that. You want to make a successful YouTube channel, he shows you how to do that. Like it's, he has all sorts of different avenues of, of content creation that every morning he does a central Q and A that's morphed into something um, greater than any of us could have imagined. So it's, it's really cool to see. What do you got, Andrew? Tell me you've seen Vin Diesel's creepy interview video. Uh, which one specifically? Because he's been creepy quite often. So you'll have to let me know which, um, which video you were mentioning. You may have even commented that. I've just not gotten to that yet. Yeah. Yeah, we'll need, we'll need a link or something. Um, oh. No, I can hear the mouse. Sorry for taking over the chat. I thought I was a silent mouse. No, no, no. Okay, so you can't hear it. All right, that's good. No, no, but the thing is, too, like, um, actually, to give him another shout-out, Aaron Waller, uh, and again, go to his channel, subscribe, watch his reviews, and for another plug, Justice League Dark Apocalypse War just came out. On my channel, I have a spoiler review. On his channel, he has a spoiler-free review, so... Check them both out, but of course, check them out accordingly to if you've seen the movie or not. Um, me, like, even just being, like, in this setup is because Aaron was like, hey, in your videos, I liked when you had, like, a table set up versus when you had the close camera with, like, limited things behind you things. So listening to feedback is good. I and mean, that's how you should want to uh, build your channel. And it's the only way to get better. You have to be able to... Um, take what people are saying they want to see and kind of, you know, revise it within reason. And I say that because, like, somebody can make some crazy thing like, oh, I only want you to be filming yourself while you're outside in a pool doing blah, blah, blah. But you know what I mean. Um, other thing, uh, another shameless plug. The reason I keep going to my phone is so I can keep the Canon camera app open. The reason I'm doing that is if you're worried about making content and you're using a Canon camera and using a Mac and the camera keeps shutting off, I've got a video on how to keep your camera going beyond the 30 minutes. Using the app is the secret, but there are a couple different things you have to do. However, if you have a PC, apparently Canon has released a beta for the camera on its own to actually use your camera as a webcam standalone without other plugins and stuff. So... If you got a PC and you have the chance to check that out, please do so and please comment down below if that worked for you or head over to my other video where I talk about this and let me know if that works because if they do that for Mac, I mean, not only would that be a game changer, but I'll be so pissed because I spent so much money getting this whole thing to work. 
<laughs> we got Solon running today looks like Frankenstein. Tom Cruise is smoking. All right, so a lot of Tom Cruise going on in here. Do you guys uh, agree or disagree about the 100-meter dash versus the 400? Or do you have Tom Cruise on both? Tom would block the arm failing, flailing with his arm. <laughs> with his arm pumps. It's true. Just Samson's got. Nope. Tom all the way. 50-yard, one mile, whatever. I used to work with one of them. I know for a fact Tom would win. That's So, Samson, I think you're implying you used to work with Stallone is what you're, is what you're saying. Um, what if we made them... Trying to think, what will be a good challenge? Like, if you have to do, like, um, so sort of medley, where it's like, you got to do multiple events, what would be an event Stallone would win over Tom Cruise? Aside from, like, go do, go curl 50-pound dumbbells 20 times. Like, that's the only one I could think of. But I'm curious if there's an event you guys all think, and girls who are in the, the video, of course, um, who, in what way, what event do you think Stallone would actually win? Um, also, if you're excited for a Demolition Man Part 2, put that in the comments. I'm curious. Just yes or no, you can write that in there. I want to know if you're excited or not for the thought of Stallone doing a Demolition Man Part 2. I am actually curious about that. Uh... Dude would be great. A dude button. All right. I'll work on a dude button. Add a Keanu Woe from Bill and Ted or The Matrix. Yeah. That's good. You know, I'm going to make... Uh, let me just pop up my notepad here. I'm just going to add these suggestions. By the way, if you are new to the stream, welcome. Um, hit the thumbs up, of course, if you're liking this. Um, we're currently... We had aspirations of talking about um, normal, boring stuff, but we're actually on the high-level conversation here of who would win a race between Sylvester Stallone and Tom Cruise. So hit the thumbs up, if you would. So we need a, uh, a dude button. And we need a whoa button. Whoa. Any other suggestions, of course, let me know. You change the direction of that Sure 58 to not pick up your mouse clicks. Wait, so are you... All right, so just to, just to be sure, are you guys hearing the mouse clicks or are you not hearing the clicks? Just curious. Aaron, have to help each other grow. Yeah, and that's the funny thing, too, is like when you're... One of the tips I give in... Um, I did, an, I did a YouTube 101 video on whether or not you should make a podcast with a friend. And it, the short answer there, not to spoil the video, and I hope at some point you could watch it, but the short answer there is I always say you should not make a podcast that's dependent on another person for you to actually make the podcast. However, you should have people that either you make podcasts or YouTube channel content with or people that you work with. Oh, sorry. Or people that like also do it that you can together, like help each other get better, bounce ideas, um, collab with each other, that kind of thing. So like Aaron and myself, you know, we both on like every video are commenting on each other's videos, leaving each other notes, telling each other how to get better you know, that kind of thing. And you need that in order to improve your content. Now, that's also not to say that, like, with every YouTube, every YouTuber or podcaster should have aspirations to having the greatest content ever. Like, you can, you can just do what you want to do. But if you do want for your video quality to get better, for the sets to get better, for your, your subscriber base to go up, for your likes to go up, you have to have somebody to bounce ideas by. And... It could be a person that you do make content with, but I feel like if you do rely on somebody else to help make it, make the content, you set yourself up for failure. It's much better to collab with somebody on a side project, um, but at the very least, you need somebody else to talk to who also makes content. Um, that is a key to success. What do we got? 
Beard's looking good. Your patience has paid off. Uh, so it looks much, trust me, I appreciate the, the compliment. And I acknowledge that at a distance, when I look at pictures of it and when I watch the videos, it looks more filled in than it actually is. Like you can probably see, you can see there, like there's like that patch. So like if I comb it, it kind of like fills in a little bit, but it's still not full. So the front part, I've never had an issue like the mustache goatee area. But the sides, struggling still. But we'll get there. And of course, with the wink. All right, we got no mouse clicks. All right. Then Samson wrote, can't hear them, but I've been around a lot, uh, been around a lot of loud mics. <laughs> That's fair. I've been to a lot of loud concerts, so. And we got, I'm interviewing people for my podcasts. I'm just a better conversationalist, duh. But I never rely on someone else to be the core of my show. Yeah, no, and that's the thing. It's one of those where, you know, I think every every person that has even the slightest bit of creativity in them who wants to do something on, like, any kind of platform outside of just, like, I'm going to make this little statue for myself and keep it over here. Like, anybody who has a little bit of a creative bug always has the thought of, I want to do this, but I want to do it with a friend and kind of work with somebody else to make something. And I feel like when you do that, it's like going into a business with a business partner. You don't own the whole thing. And a lot of times as people, I think we tend to want to make excuses when things don't go right. So if you go into podcasting, YouTube creation, a business, uh, anything with another person and you need that other person to make whatever that baseline product is, whether digital or physical, um, you set yourself up for failure because there'll even be those, those weeks, those days where you're like, all right, we're recording Monday and Friday. And then all of a sudden there's a Monday, person A can't show up. All right, as person B, I can't do it now. Person A is not here. Friday shows up. All of a sudden now I got something that came up, but they could do it. So now we've missed out on an entire week of making whatever it is because our schedules don't line up. So if you want to make content, do it on your own. And the project that involves other people should be a side project, side hustle, whatever it is you want to call it. Vicky O'Neill in the house. Just saw you were live and want to support you. And we support you too. Whoa, we are at 10 thumbs up. That is a record on this channel. Thank you all for the thumbs up, the subscribes. Um, I also want all of you, if you make your own content in the comments now, um, I don't know, just say I do or something like that. Um, so that way the other members in the comment section could see that you actually make content. We can all check that out. I think we should all help support each other. Just Samson, good to see you here too. Yep, the income stream is strong. Samson, the beards take time. They do. The beards, I've learned, do take time. The only reason I'm hesitant is, um, so right now we're in month two of quarantine. And a long time ago, I worked on a supply boat in Louisiana. This was part of my internship. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I was studying to be a merchant marine. I got my merchant marine license. Um, but to do so, you have to get a certain amount of sea time, meaning you got to work on ships for X amount of time. So I did a summer program in Louisiana and went on the boat. And at that time, I was, you know, coming from maritime, we have a regiment. It's all about being clean shaven, you know, clean everything. So I kind of was conditioned for that. And when I got on the boat, everybody just kind of let, you know, they let the beards fly. So after a while, I decided, all right, I'm just going to let it go and see what happens. Now, I remember coming back home after, after the three months and my beard looked terrible. Granted, there was no cleaning it up or anything, but it still looked terrible, meaning it still didn't fill in the way I wanted it to. Now, I don't remember where in the three months I started the, all right, we're just going to grow the beard and see what happens. So I'm afraid that now we're in month two. If the whole quarantine thing kind of lifts and we're allowed to like go back into you know somewhat regular life, if it's looking terrible, I'm going to have to shave it. Because I can't be in front of people. I, I work in sales. I can't be in front of people with a crappy looking beard. 
So it almost would be like it was all for nothing if I get to the point where I'm back in the public, it's not looking good, I got to get rid of it. Um, so I'm curious. Wow, we're at 12 thumbs up. Wow, thanks, everybody. That is awesome. Here is to all of you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we're at 12 thumbs up, eight watchers. If you have not subscribed, do so. Um, and you may have just missed. Um, if you make your own content, you have your own channel, just write here or I do, actually write I do in the comments so that way everybody else in the comment section can see that you make your own content. Um, you also just missed, where do we go? We're at 40 minutes right now. You missed 35 minutes of who would win in a race. Not a not an electoral race, an actual foot race. Tom Cruise or Sylvester Stallone. So all I'm saying is you might want to watch the replay of this. We actually had examples shown as well. Whoa, Mike in the house. What is up? Good to see you. My brother from another mother. He's actually more my dad from another dad. <laughs> Mike's the man. Check out his work on Instagram for sure. I do haven't uploaded it yet. All right, great. No. Um, what's good about that, if you have the um, pocket of content, like if you've banked content, then once you are ready to create the podcast, you can upload, like Pat says, upload like three, I think he says, when you first start, like three at one shot or five at one shot. Um, because in that way, if somebody listens and they like it, there is other content for them to see. There's one thing I don't like about that concept though. And I may have talked about it with a couple of you offline. Um, if you, if you're, if your mindset is, okay, I'm going to re release content and I won't do so until I have a batch of work to release at once, at a certain point, you're going to be spinning your wheels because you might have three and then you're like, uh, I'll wait till I have five. And then you get to five and you're like, oh, I don't like that one. Delete that. Do another video, you know? And it could delay you a bit. So be very careful with that. I, I'm more of the school of if you've got one episode – just upload it and then just keep going and keep going. You may not get approved by some of the podcast companies if you only have one, which is fine. Um, just keep creating stuff. Throw them on YouTube. YouTube lets you throw up whatever you want. So you can put them all on YouTube. Um, keep a file of what you make. And then when you have five or so, then put them in like a Buzzsprout to release the podcast. But I'm more of the nature of just do it, like just do it, just go live. Um, actually, they talked about that today on the income stream. Just go live or just start making the show or the content and eventually the bank of episodes, the bank of interviews, it will be there. So just start doing it and then kind of go from there. Um, but I like that you've already started recording it and everything. Facial hair is an age thing. I didn't need to shave until I was 21. It was patchy until I was 30. Now it grows pretty thick and then patchy. All right. I will remember that. And just Samson with a reminder, Tom won, by the way, in case anyone missed it. It's true. It's true. All right. We've approached the 45-minute mark. I think, I think that will just about do it. Um, I'll give all of you another minute or so if you had any kind of rapid fire questions to throw in the comments. Um, or if you just want to make a comment, plug your own stuff. You have a chance to do that in the comment section. I of course will share it on the screen. Um, but most importantly, I thank all of you for even stopping by. It means a lot. Um, 12 thumbs up. That's a record on the live show. So I uh, forever grateful. Um, we've had probably over 15 people come in and out of the channel, uh, which is again, Forever grateful for all of you. And I don't know if you saw this, but one, you want to follow me on all social media, Hey Archer. With the exception of TikTok, I am Hey Archer 1, because there's already a Hey Archer on there somehow. Um, but we already have, I made a challenge, what was it, like two weeks ago, that if I hit 150 subs, I would do a giveaway. We hit the 150. I did the giveaway. But now we're already approaching on 200. So it's a, little, it's a ways off. At the moment, last time I looked, we were 25 or 24 off. I don't know if that's changed since the stream started. But I'm thinking for 200, I need to do 
another giveaway type thing. The secret society moment here, you guys, if you watch Hey Archer, I say, I've said this on the podcast. If you watch Hey Archer as its own, uh, you're in the inner circle because they're longer episodes and I can say more things. And there's plenty of people who watch all the other stuff who don't know a lot of the stuff that we talk about here. Um, in about, a, I'd say in another two to three weeks, I will be launching the Hey Archer merch. Um, I've already, I'm waiting on like two more samples to come in, I'd say. Um, but the Hey Archer launch of merchandise will go. That was on my vision board and I was able to cross it off. Um, so watch the 150 subscriber video to see what the first thing was. Um, there's another thing kind of floating around here you may see. But the Hey Archer merch is going to launch. And I'm thinking maybe at 200, I'll choose one person and you can get kind of like a, a Hey Archer gift box of stuff. You know, you'll just let me know what sizes of things you are and I'll send them to you. But um, that's what's going to be happening the next couple of weeks. So I'm thinking for 200, that's what it'll be. Uh, some sort of like gift box thing of Hey Archer merchandise. But... Uh, the last thing I'll say before I kind of just fly through the remaining comments, and again, thanks for listening. Um, this quarantine has been really bad for a lot of people, um, financially, for relationships, and all that kind of stuff. And the promise that I made to myself that I want you to ask yourself, and it's never too late, is when this was done, I didn't want to lose out on this time. And, you know, Having now two months, like, to be stuck at home, it's, you'll, who knows how long this goes. Maybe it's another two months. Maybe it's another week. You know, there's no telling. Um, But it's time you won't get back. And it's one of those where at the end of this quarantine, I didn't want to look back and say, I didn't maximize that time I had home. So that's where I went all in on this. That's how I found the income stream. Uh, The income stream and Pat Flynn has pushed me further um, to improving this whole setup, um, and again, the merchandise kind of came from that. So the, the last kind of tidbit I'll, I'll leave to you guys before I just fly through these comments is write it down, do whatever you need to do, but when this quarantine is over, will you be able to look back and say, I at least accomplished one thing? Um, just keep asking yourself that. And uh, leave a thumbs up if, if you have already been doing that. Leave a thumbs up if you want to. Um, but... Time's precious. That's the other thing that I've learned. Time is precious. And it's one of those where when this, again, you have, you're having time now to be at home and, and create whatever you want to create. So use it efficiently. Uh, when batching, upload, and schedule for your later launch date, keep recording, keep uploading. When your launch date comes, it goes with or without you. Keep uploading after that. It's a very good tip. It's a very good tip. My strategy is have a reasonable backlog for auto-upload just in case things go haywire and I can't record new stuff immediately. I've recorded 10 interviews so far. Good. How do you plan on monetizing your channel other than merch? Great question. Um, I'll end with that one. The, so the funny thing is with this channel, and Aaron asked this on a previous Hey Archer, kind of like what's my end goal, end game with this? I'm not concerned with um, monetizing all of this yet. It's not, I'm still way too far from that. Like I'm not, I think from a, from a quality perspective, from a content perspective, from a producing, uh, producing, I swear I'm getting dumber in this quarantine too. From a production standpoint, um, I want to, I still want to get better. Like those are, there are more things on my list uh, of getting better than monetizing. Now, if I had, you know, if I was in the Pat Flynn scenario, 2009, if I had lost my job and I was doing this, then yeah, I'd be concerned with, all right, how can I monetize all this like right now? Um, even the merch is not really to, to profit on. Um, it's more of like, I just, I said it in a previous episode. I just wanted to make it. It's one of those where, you know, I was, I was watching, um, I was walking through the mall that I work at and I'm looking at all these stores, you know, Louis Vuitton, um, Mark Jacobs, uh, people are wearing Supreme shirts and they're all brands and, and they have brand recognition and people are like happy for these brands and they're happy to wear the brands. But behind all of that, when you dig through the entire thing, 
you just have somebody who's like, I want to design something that has whatever I want on it, on it, you know? And I was like, why can't I do that? Like, why can't you do that? And that's what, that's what spawned the merch idea. I was like, yeah, the logo that I had my friend make, I want that on a shirt. I want that on a mug. So just do it, you know? And the, the profiting and monetizing it, that's, that's down the road. Um, and actually, yeah, to Samson's point, the affiliate programs, I am an Amazon affiliate. It's one of those where I didn't want to leave money on the table. If I'm buying all my stuff on Amazon, um, I have links down below for all the stuff. So yeah, I do have the affiliate as well. Um, but at the moment, I'm not trying to maximize the monetization, if that makes sense. But who knows down the road what happens. But um, that was fun. I got to say, this was just like um, just like Pat said, every week, every episode, you just got to get a little bit better. And this one far exceeded the last episode. We had more viewers, more thumbs up. It was great. I hope all of you enjoyed it. Um, and maybe I'll do more Hey Archer Lives than just the ones a week. So I want to thank all of you for being here. Like, comment, subscribe. Plug your own stuff in the comments, and I'll see you later. Peace.